today I'm going to do something a bit different. I'm going to make a book using a book kit. This book kit comes from Talus. Talus is a supplier of tools and materials for hand book binding and conservation. They're based in Brooklyn, New York, and I've been buying from Talus for almost 20 years. I'll explain how this project came about uh, later in the video, maybe during the sewing. This isn't a paid promotion, though Talus did provide me with a couple of book kits and a great new paste brush, which I'll show off during the video. I'll be using some basic tools such as the ruler, knife, an awl, a brush, uh, some pressing boards and a brick, and some glue. And PVA is all you need. I'll have a list of the supplies required in the description and a bone folder, which isn't shown there. A fun aspect of this kit is that it doesn't have any instructions. So you get to make whatever you want out of it. So what I'm going to demonstrate in this video isn't necessarily the book that the person that put the kit together had in mind. So it's got some cloth for a spine, a spine stiffener, some board paper, headbands, which I'm not going to use, some boards for covers, and some nice mohawk superfine paper. So the contents of the kit says that it's got 24 sheets of US letter size paper, but the kit I've got actually has more paper than that. So I'm going to actually use the extra paper. So if you don't have the extra paper, you'll need an extra couple of sheets of paper, but any type of paper will do. It doesn't have to match the paper in the kit. I'm going to fold five four sheet signatures and two two sheet end papers. So I'll fold these first. There's a little trick I do when I'm folding paper like this. I bend it back about 90 degrees, grip it, and then bring it forward. And hopefully half the creep is at the front and half at the back of the signature. I'm not going to trim up this book at all. So you don't need a guillotine or a plow. And thus you want to fold it as neat as possible to make the finished book look as neat as possible. The Guild of Book Workers is the main organisation that represents bookbinders in the United States. Since the early 80s, the Guild has been running an annual conference called the Standards of Excellence. Standards is supported in part through a vendor trade display at the meeting. And Talus has been an active supporter of this for many years. So I've folded five four sheet sections, and this is the paper that's left over, and I'll do two two sheet end papers. So not surprisingly, standards was unfortunately cancelled this year. But during the month when the standards would have been held, the Guild ran a vendor appreciation event where they highlighted all the vendors that would have attended standards this year. Talus, of course, was one of those. Back to the book. We've got five sections and two end papers. Now we want to punch some holes for sewing. I'll use one of the leftover sheets of paper to make a punching template. So any piece of paper, any scrap piece of paper you've got lying around will do for that. I'm just going to cut a little hook on the side of this paper and then I will make some marks for the head and tail of the book and then a couple of marks where the kettle stitches will be about a half an inch from the head and tail and then two sewing locations where I'm going to do a French link type sewing. So divide the distance between the kettle stitches uh, into thirds and at each third put two holes about a half an inch apart. I'll make those confusing instructions much clearer by drawing it. Of course I normally do my videos in millimeters but since uh, Talus is a US company based in Brooklyn, New York I thought I'd have a go at doing everything in inches. And it's also why I'm saying signature instead of my usual section. 
Now I'll use the punching template to punch sewing holes in each of the signatures. So I'll just punch the holes with an awl, and that's an awl I bought from Talus about 15 years ago, and they still stock that awl. It's one of my favorites. So I'll just punch these holes through it 45 degrees into some corrugated cardboard. As part of the Vendor Appreciation Month uh, run by the Guild, each of the vendors uh, put a post on the Guild's Facebook page. In the post by Talus, Jill of Talus suggested that Talus might like to work with people doing online classes. Now, while my videos are available to anyone free of charge on YouTube, I still need to make a living. So I did write to Jill to explore some opportunities maybe to do a commercial partnership with Talus. Now we haven't come up with anything yet, but to break the ice, we decided that I'd do a little video on this book kit that Talus has. Okay, so I'm about to run out of hole punching, so back to the book. So this is where I deviate from the kit a little bit in that the thread that comes with the kit is a bit short. Uh, I forgot to check it uh, before I had settled on this design and there's just not enough thread to do the sewing that I want to do. So everyone has some sort of thread. It doesn't have to be the nice linen thread that came with the kit. Any sort of cotton, nylon, acrylic thread will do, but you need six foot of it it doesn't need to be super strong, just reasonably strong. If it's really thin, you might like to double it up. If you are using a linen thread, and I'll put a suggestion for the linen thread in the description below, then there's a little trick to stop the thread coming off your needle by piercing the tail of the thread and pulling it back over itself. The sewing is fairly straightforward. We're going to sew all along. So we'll go along the first section, which is actually an outer end paper, and then go up through the kettle stitch in the second section. Sew back along, but at each of the sewing locations between the kettle stitches, we will catch up the section below. That will make more sense in the video. After the first two sections are sewn on, I'll do a square knot to join the sections up. And then at the end of the third section, I'll do a kettle stitch. Now, if you've never done a kettle stitch before, I'll put a link to a video I've got on how to do kettle stitches. But it's fairly straightforward and I'm sure you'll understand it just from uh, watching the video. So to finish up the story of how this video came about, I am still trying to think of things that I could do with Talus to potentially add an income stream for myself, but I suspect that the tyranny of distance, as we say in Australia, will get in the way. It's hard to get further from Brooklyn, New York than Brisbane, Queensland, but they weren't so far away when I lived in Madison, Wisconsin for 10 years. And thus, when I lived in the US, uh, I was a regular customer of Talus. And in the spirit of that vendor appreciation, it, it's been my pleasure to do a video uh, highlighting uh, Talus as a supplier to the hand book binding world. And anyone that is a reader of the comments that I make on my YouTube videos will know that I regularly recommend Talus as a supplier along with a small number of other specialist suppliers to the hand bookbinding world. Uh, but in North America, uh, especially, they're the go-to people for everything you really need for hand bookbinding. This type of sewing is really handy for small books. It holds the sections together inside the kettle stitches without the use of tapes. The weather has started to get very hot in Brisbane, being summer, 
and I'd forgotten about this funny habit of my camera uh, losing focus in hot weather. Who knows why that happens in hot weather, but I'll have to start keeping an eye out for this problem. To finish up, do two kettle stitches with the second one going down three sections, I mean signatures. I guess it was time to retire this old glue brush after a couple of years. Though this new Talus one is so nice that I'm almost not going to use it. Always wet your bristles on your brush before you use them with adhesive. They'll last a lot longer that way. Now I'm going to glue up the spine. Ideally you would do this in some sort of uh, finishing press so that it was pointing upwards. But I'm trying to not use any specialised equipment. So I'm just going to use some pressing boards to hold it in place. And I'll try and not get too much glue onto my pressing boards. Also, just keep the glue to a minimum and you can wipe off the excess with your fingers. And even massage the glue uh, between the sections. You don't want to force it too far into the book. You don't want the pages between signatures to stick together. But you do want to force the glue or push the glue into the little ridges between the signatures. So once that's dried we'll measure the width of the book and then we'll cut a piece of paper to line the spine. 
So cut a piece of paper that's the same width or slightly wider than the spine of the book and then we'll glue the spine again and stick that paper onto it. Prior to the 19th century, nearly all books were made by attaching the boards or the covers to the text and then covering the book. In about 1820, or a little bit later, an invention called the cased book or case binding came about where the case was made and the text block were made and the two were brought together. There was a transition period where sometimes boards were glued to the outer sheet of the end papers, often called the waste. The book was covered and then the paste down was put down. And it's very similar to a case binding in the final configuration. And that's what we're going to do here. So this has an echo in a historical binding technique. The boards are the same size as the text block, so we don't have to trim them down, which is really good because they are quite thick Davy board and they'd be hard to cut. Notice how I practice putting the board down on the book before I glue it up. So I just want to make sure that I, I can line up the edges with the head and tail and the foredge before I put it down. Because once you put it down with PVA, it's next to impossible to pick it up and reposition it. It would also be a good idea to open up the book and smooth the paper down on the inside of the boards. I just forgot to do it. Now for good measure I'm going to put another spine lining over the boards and over the spine. The book is about a half an inch thick so I want the paper to extend onto the boards about an inch. So I'm going to mark a line an inch in from the, air, from the spine and I cut the paper two and a half inches wide and I'll glue that out and wrap that around the spine of the book. I'll trim up the excess paper at the head and tail once the glue is dried. If you want to get really fancy you can cut the paper at the joints at the width of the book and fold the paper down over the top of the boards which would hide the top of the boards, which will be visible in the finished book otherwise. Now we'll cover the spine with the book cloth with what's often called a breakaway spine. Now the spine stiffener happens to be the right width, but a little bit too tall. So I'll trim the spine stiffener to the same height as the book. And if it was too wide, you would trim it to the same width as the book. Now I will glue out the spine stiffener and put that down approximately in the center of the book cloth. Then I will mark up on the inside of the book cloth the trim marks and fold marks. The cloth will be glued to and folded three quarters of an inch away from the spine stiffener and I'll trim it up one and a half inches away from the spine stiffener. The outer three quarters of an inch will get glued to the boards and the pieces of cloth that extend past the boards is called the turn-ins and that will get wrapped over the boards. Whereas the inner part of the cloth will get turned over onto itself over the spine stiffener. This will make more sense when you see me do it. This allows the cloth to move away from the spine of the book when the book is opened, which means that the book opens nice and flat.
I'll now pre-crease the cloth in the spots where it will fold and then I'll glue up the outer strips and position the cloth on the book. I'll use some thin strips of paper to act as masks so that I only get the glue on the outer strips of the cloth. Putting the spine cloth on the book can be a bit tricky, so you should do a couple of practice runs before you put the glue on the book cloth. Another thing that I should have done was when I glued the boards to the book, I should have put a piece of waxed paper between the boards and the text block to stop moisture getting into the text block and also to make sure that the second page didn't stick to the boards. So before you turn over these tabs, make sure there's only one leaf of paper stuck down onto the boards and you can guess how I know to be careful with that. I've already mentioned that this breakaway spine configuration is common on sewn board bindings and I'm going to continue to borrow from the sewn board binding approach by uh, drumming on the board papers. So drumming on is to just attach something around the edges and that gives the book a nice pillowed feel. The marbled paper or the decorative paper that comes with the kit is the perfect size so it doesn't have to be trimmed and I'm going to cover the cloth by about an eighth of an inch. So I'm just going to put adhesive along one edge of the decorative paper and then put that down onto the board covering the cloth by an eighth of an inch. The overlap doesn't have to be exact but if you want Two, you could put marks on it to line up but it would be good to have the same overlap on the front and the back of the book. Now we'll do the turn-ins. We always do the head and tail turn-ins first and for the corners we'll cut it 45 degrees a bit over the width of the board away. So that's a bit over an eighth of an inch. Now we'll glue out around the outside the turn-ins. As I said, do the head and tail first and then the foredge. If you haven't done corners like this before, I'll have a link up in the top right hand corner to a video that's on doing cloth corners, but the technique applies to paper as well. The technique is straightforward enough once you've turned in the head and tail. There's a little piece of paper, a sort of a tab, that extends past the foredge and you push that down over the corner and then turn in the foredge. And that way the corner of the board isn't exposed. It's nice to get your turn-ins nice and sharp. So you use your bone folder to lift the turn-in up, push it up against the edge of the board and then fold it over the edge of the board. The final step for this side of the board is to put down what is called the paste down. And again, using the techniques from the sewn board binding, I'm going to drum it on. And this is going to hide the turn-ins from the board paper and the spine cloth. So I'm just gluing around the edges instead of the whole sheet. And then I'll just close the book. 
open it up and then smooth down the paper. Now repeat this for the other side of the book and then let the book dry open and the book is complete. As I mentioned at the start of the video, there's no instructions with this book kit, so you have free reign to make whatever book you want with the limitation of the materials included. And this is what I came up with, what I think is the simplest but nicest book with the materials included. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I may end up doing more projects with Talus in the future, we'll have to wait and see. I'll put links to the tools that I use in this video in the description below. I'm not receiving any commissions or anything like that from Talus, and I'm sure you know that I would never recommend a tool that I wouldn't use myself. As I said earlier in the year, I think for bookbinding it's really important that we support the specialist suppliers that provide tools and materials to the hand bookbinding hobby and trade. So that is it for today. I hope everyone's staying safe. Until next time, cheerio.